me tell you where they're located. The most specific places are in South Africa, Hungary, Russia, Argentina, and North America. Within these areas, there are specific names for the temperate grasslands. In North America, they're called prairies. In South America, they're called pampas. In, Eur in Eurasia, they're called steppes. And in Africa, veldts. Now, let me tell you what the climate is like. The temperatures vary from summer to winter, much like here in North Carolina. Rainfall is moderate, and the amount of it influences the height of the grass, which therefore affects the entirety of the life in the biome. Also, there are organisms and plants that are extremely unique to this biome. Perhaps the most important plant is the grass here. This is the most nutrient-dense and richest grass in the world. Also, this biome can be defined by the extreme lack of trees and large shrubs. There are different types of animals in each different part of the world, though, in each biome. So for instance, in the steppes, it's very common to see lynx, antelope, falcons, and foxes. And in North America, it's very common to see bison, gophers, prairie dogs, birds, coyotes, and insects. This biome has a very large ecological impact and importance. For instance, the land is extremely rich in soil. It has flat lands that are very good for grazing. They provide wetlands, pollinate crops and natural vegetation, and maintain biodiversity while also mitigating droughts and floods. More scientists these days are supporting the global warming theory, which is a direct relationship between increased levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and rising global temperatures. The amount of vegetation in these grasslands decreases the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, therefore lessening the effects of global warming. Now let me tell you about the economic impact and importance of this biome. First, the rich soil creates great farmland. Second, it provides recreation and aesthetic to tourists. Grasslands contribute $78 billion annually to the U.S. economy by supporting an estimated 60 million cattle and 8 million sheep. To sustain agriculture production, grasslands must be conserved and well managed to produce robust, resilient stands. It is estimated that over 1 million visitors annually enjoy the ecosystem services provided by the national grasslands. With this fact in mind, it's no surprise that the estimated value of the aesthetic here is probably about $280 million per year in the United States, and that's just in the United States. Only 5% of tall grass prairie still remains. This makes it the rarest of all ecosystems on Earth today. In America, the government has set aside some grassland to be protected. The USDA administers the Buffalo Gap National Grassland, which has 600,000 acres of scattered tracts of prairie land in South Dakota. Finally, let's learn some interesting grassland facts. Most of the time, grassland biomes are normally situated between a forest and a desert. In fact, grasslands surround every single desert in Asia. Also, there is a grassland biome on each continent, with the exception of Antarctica. Boom, 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 diara, 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 Rain, snow, or sleet, or sky, there's so much sunshine that you can get a tan. Boom, 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 boom. Look at the zebra. Oh wait, it's getting eaten by a cheetah. It's part of grass and life. Pet prey relationship. Farewell, zebra. Boom, 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 boom. Where are all the trees? They are indeed really rare. And why are there so many grass fires? It all makes sense now. It's really flat and plain.